Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Daily Devo for April 14th. It is a Tuesday, and my kids are currently eating breakfast right to my left. So, hey, kids. Want to say hi to the Daily Devoers? No, thanks. They don't want to say hi. All right, we're just going to dive right into it. Today we have Psalm 78, and we're finishing up Psalm 78 today, and then we're moving forward in Hebrews 7. Um, so the end of Psalm 78, remember, uh, 78 is a commentary, based, basically, of... Israel's history. Um, so if you can imagine the the story of First and Second Samuel and Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy being a narrative, then this is a commentary on that narrative. Uh, and basically just the, the psalmist saying, here's what God was doing, here's what he decided, and here's the reason why he decided it. Um, we're not going to read all of it, uh, but I do want to want to jump to verse 70 in 78 where before he was saying he, he constantly talks about how israel was was being unfaithful and not and not not following the lord and god responds by basically just not not choosing them to be his people not choosing them uh to to be redeemed and being restored from assyria and from the other the other empires that have been attacking them but it says that he did choose judah he, ch- he chose the tribe of Judah, and specifically a man from the tribe of Judah to lead them, and that man is David. In verse 70 it says, He chose David his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From tending the sheep he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands he led them. And we're just going to stop there for a second because... This is going to come back into our uh, Hebrews 7 for the day. So let's let's go over to Hebrews 7. <clears throat> well, we're talking about Melchizedek. And this is a very difficult part of Hebrews, especially for us as non-Jews. Um, you need a lot of Old Testament background and understanding to, to really piece together what, what the, the author is doing here exactly. But I think we can get through it and also get something really important and really special out of out of Melchizedek and the story of Melchizedek. Basically, the story of Melchizedek is a mystery. Um, there's not much there. It's in Genesis 14, I believe, uh, where, where he pops up. Let's just read the first few verses of, of chapter 7, and then we'll talk a little bit about him and why he's important. <clears throat> 7-1. It says... This Melchizedek was king of Salem. Salem was the ancient name for Jerusalem, by the way. Um, So just just so you're aware, uh, when he says king of Salem, that means king of ancient Jerusalem before Abraham. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness, then also king of Salem means king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. So, stop there for a second. This comes from a story in Genesis 13 where it's, it's as, this is Abraham, so this is before the Jewish people were a people. This is before they were even really a family. This is before Abraham had Isaac. And so this is before the the kingdom of Israel. This is before God had chosen his people. And it says that Lot had been Lot, which is Abraham's nephew, had been basically taken captive uh, by a king. And a and a coalition of kings had risen up against Abraham and Abraham collected his a bunch of his people and his retinue and, and he did like a rescue mission uh, to try to save Lot. And they did. They successfully saved Lot and and he was brought back into Abraham's camp. And it says after that they had defeated the king and the coalition of kings, um, the kings brought gifts to Abraham. But specifically, it says randomly out of nowhere that Melchizedek, this guy that hadn't shown up before in Genesis, who was king of Salem, came out and offered bread and wine to Abraham. And then Abraham give, gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. Now, Melchizedek is this really mysterious character. We have no idea what happens after this. We have no idea what his story or background is. He shows up for an instant and then leaves in the story of Genesis. But interestingly, there's so much there that points to Israel's history. Abraham gives Melchizedek the priest of God 
a tenth of everything, just like the tithe that God commands his people to give to the Levites many, many years later. Um, and what the author of Hebrews is saying is that this points to Melchizedek being a priest outside of the Levitical priesthood of, of Israel. In Israel, you can only be a priest if you were from the tribe of Levi. But since he's trying to make the point that Jesus is a priest for us, he's our high priest who mediates between us and God, he's saying, well, Jesus isn't from the line of Levi, so how does that make sense? He's saying, no, he's not from the line of Levi. He's from the line of Melchizedek, and that this is the reason that God gave us this little glimpse into Melchizedek's story is to point us to Christ, is to point us to his eventual high priest who would mediate for us for all eternity. And just like we don't get, get a story of Melchizedek's life and death, we don't get a story of his birth, we don't get a story of what happens when he eventually dies, he says the same way Jesus does not, does not have a beginning and end. He was always there and he will always be there for us as our high priest. That's, the, that's why the, the author of Hebrews is, is connecting us back to Melchizedek's story. Why is this important? It's because at the end of chapter 7, in 26, he says, Such a high priest, this is a Levitical high priest, truly meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of his people. This is what the Levitical priests would have to do. They would have to, they'd have to offer sacrifices for all of the people of God constantly, day after day, because... God's people would sin day after day. And so you'd have to constantly be offering sacrifices. But it, but he's saying that, that that's not the case with Christ. It says, he sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests men in all their weakness. But the oath which came after the law appointed the son who has been made perfect forever. Remember, this understanding of perfect means that Jesus completed his journey to become our high priest and to become our savior. And because of this, he made a once and for all sacrifice that is sufficient for all of our sins so that we can be made whole and, and be brought into connection with the Father once and for all. That's amazing. And that's why he's talking about Melchizedek. He's, he's trying to establish Jesus as being the high priest for us so that his sacrifice could could be worth something for us. This is a this is a a piece of hope for us, especially coming off of Easter, is that Jesus continually mediates for us, continually stands in for us, and leads us and guides us along the way of the journey of salvation. So we're going to continue that in chapter 8 tomorrow, but thanks for joining me today, and I'd say pretty, I, our, my kids are being pretty amazing, so great job guys, keep eating your cereal. Thanks for joining me, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Have a great day.